Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. These are the movies I watched in October 2023. Alright, to start this month off, I watched Doctor Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Now, this is actually my the first black and white movie I've ever seen. And so I was a little bit worried just going into it, seeing as it's, you know, different from anything I've ever watched. But it was really, really good. Uh, the main thing that, you know, encouraged me to watch it was the fact that it's a Kubrick movie. And, you know, the only Kubrick movie I've seen other than this is 2001 Space Odyssey. But I love that. And I heard that this was sort of a interesting. It was different from 2001 A Space Odyssey, but still really good. So I gave it a try. And, yeah, it's really good. It's surprising how funny it is for its age. You'd think, you know, the humor wouldn't stand up, you know, uh, almost 60 years later. But it really does. It does a great job. It's just a really good satire of the cold war which is surprising seeing as this was made you know in the midst of the cold war but yeah uh, all the all of it still really works and really holds up today and it's just kind of fun seeing kubrick just take a poke at you know politics and stuff like that and just sort of making fun of that whole thing so this is a genuinely funny movie and it's really good next up is paranorman uh, this is a studio Leica movie, as, you know, stop motion, obviously. Uh, and it's just a fun little movie. Uh, compared to other Leica movies, it didn't feel like it had as much uh, emotion in it. But I didn't have too much of a problem with that. It seemed more focused on comedy. And the comedy was good. So that's, you know, totally fine with me. All the characters, though, are really charming and just fun to watch. You're just watching them get up to crazy shenanigans and just... You know, smiling your the whole time throughout this movie. So this is just a fun little watch. Next up, I watched Kubo and the Two Strings. Now, I've seen this movie before, and I think it is my favorite Studio Leica movie. Everything about it is just so fantastical. The whole time, I feel so engaged and engrossed in this world that they've created. You know, it's inspired by Japanese folklore, and so they use a lot of interesting things from that. And it just, it feels so cool. And the entire time, they have incredible visuals, you know, using those fantastical elements to really create in incredible imagery and stuff like that. And so it's, you know, one of the best looking stop motion movies I've ever seen. Um, but even aside from that, the characters are incredibly charismatic and you really, you really get attached to them. And so that's really good. The action is great. That sort of goes along with the visuals, but it's it's kind of cool seeing how well they're able to do action in the form of stop motion. So that's really cool. And, you know, the final fight, that gives me hype every single time. So, yeah, this is definitely... I, I said probably before, but I think this is definitely my favorite Studio Leica movie. All right, another Studio Leica was Missing Link. Now, I saw lots of good things about this movie, uh, just it seemed like it would be another, you know, home run for like I just hate getting another great movie out there. But honestly, I was kind of a bit disappointed by it. It wasn't as uh, mature as some of the other like movies. It felt like it felt very kid focused. The humor felt very kid focused. The themes were very just surface level and stuff like that. I didn't care for a lot of the characters as much. And it was really disappointing because I, I really wanted to like this movie. This was, this is their most recent movie, so I was hoping for good things. But I was just a bit disappointed. Now, I don't want to say that this is a bad movie. There's still some good little charming things in it. It has uh, some really good visuals and stuff like that. But for the most part, I was just sort of, I was just sort of thinking this movie was all right. And by the end, I was a bit bored. All right, we got an absolute classic, Citizen Kane. Now, everyone, or most people probably have heard of this. I, you know, yeah, everyone has heard of this movie. It's just sort of used as a phrase now where when people are talking about movies like, oh, it was good, but there's no Citizen Kane, you know. It's just like the quintessential thing of, you know, an incredible movie, I guess. And so I watched it for the first time, and I genuinely just thought it was okay. Uh, I didn't have a lot of things that I really cared for one way or the other. I just felt like a fine enough movie and decently entertaining, I guess. 
And I sort of realized afterwards that some of the some of the big things this movie did were more about, you know, changing the style that movies were done at the time. You know, different camera angles, sort of a more more different type of storytelling where it's all told through flashbacks and sort of, you know, introducing a more art house style, I guess. And so its influence is definitely incredible. But the movie in of itself, I just didn't find a lot that was super intriguing. All right, next up, I watched Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Now, when I first saw this movie being announced, I just sort of thought it looked pretty mediocre, just sort of a fun little movie, but it got really good reviews. And so I kind of decided, you know, might as well check it out. And I mean, it was kind of what I expected, maybe a bit better. It is just, for the most part, just a fun movie. I don't know what else to say. I don't think it's trying to be something incredible it's clearly just probably something that you know some people who like D, they were like let's make a movie about this and i can i can respect that and yeah it's just a fun movie with cool fantasy elements and stuff like that so yeah i'm sure if you're a fan of D, you probably enjoy this movie a lot i don't know a whole lot about D. maybe people are mad that it's inaccurate about some things but i i don't know it just seems like a pretty good movie to me all right, the last like a movie that I'll talk about this video is Coraline. Now, Coraline, it was Leica's first movie. I think I saw this once. I don't even know if I watched it in full, though. I barely remembered it. But this is such an interesting movie. You know, using light horror elements in, like, a kid's movie is always very interesting to me. I, I'm always curious how they handle that. And they do a very good job. And... Because they're able to create a very creepy, very, very unnerving atmosphere without using traditional, like, what mo most horror movies would use. It's just, like, gore and stuff like that. And so I really, I really respect that. And I think the stop-motion animation style really lends itself to that. Because where you use CGI, I think it's very easy to just create something that's very clean and pristine, but... Uh, stop-motion has an almost dirtier look to it that works really well or like dirtier and grittier look to it that works really well in instances like this. And so I really thought this was a good movie. Uh, the one thing that fell off to me during this movie was in certain, like, in certain movements, certain things didn't feel as heavy, I guess. It's hard to say. It was something about the way it was animated and like maybe the sound effects, but some movements just felt very weird and didn't, it, it felt like, objects being flown around like didn't have any weight to them and i don't know that's something that could just be the fact that this is like his first movie and they definitely got better at stuff like that later on but overall yeah this is just a great movie full of mystery and intrigue all right so the last movie i watched this month was et uh, absolute classic of a movie directed by the incredible director steven spielberg haven't seen a lot of his movies but you know, I hear all, all about him, so obviously he must be pretty good. And this movie, obviously, is an absolute classic. Uh, I'm surprised I have not seen it before this, but either way, this was such a great movie. It had so much emotion behind it, whether it was in the highs or the lows. It could both be an extremely heartwarming movie and also so heartbreaking. And I think it balanced both those really, really well. The whole time, I was just feeling... A strong emotion one way or the other or sometimes both at the same time I guess so it did a really good job at that uh, but even even other than like the core plot other things like like the acting was really well done especially for like the child actors I'm really impressed with how well they did uh, and the visuals of course were incredible incredible practical effects even like just the like the ship I'm surprised that they put so much effort into that even though it's not in the movie too much, but obviously like E.T., that's, I, I was really impressed with that. I'm not exactly sure how they did it. It seemed like a mixture of like a puppet or like animatronics and maybe sometimes someone was in a costume, something like that. And I don't know, it just looked really good. So overall, this was a great movie. Alrighty, so those were the movies I watched this month. Please tell me your thoughts on them and this video in the comments. And I'll see you guys next time. Remember, save a blobfish. Bye.